Okay, so we're going to continue our discussion of cutaneous innervation. So touch is categorized as fine or coarse. Fine touch includes um, a variety of receptors and subsensations, and coarse touch is mediated by free nerve endings throughout the skin. So we'll talk about the different types of receptors and nerve endings that are mediating that touch sensation. Um, cutaneous receptors respond to touch, pressure, vibration, stretch, noxious stimuli, and temperature. So a noxious stimulus that um, stimulates cutaneous receptors might be um, excessive pressure like stubbing your toe, um, vibra excessive vibration like you're using a, a belt sander or something like that, um, or it could be chemical, it could be um, excessive temperature, that sort of thing. So um, there's, this is a figure from the book that shows um, the cutaneous innervation of the upper limb um, through the C8 um, dorsal root. So um, it, part of um, the reason of knowing the different nerve distributions is to know what the effect a, um, an injury of a particular nerve root has on that, um, the limb. So muscle spindles are sensory organs in muscle. They respond to quick and prolonged stretches of the muscle. So there are two different um, nerves, the um, alpha and the gamma motor neuron, and we'll talk about this more in chapter 10 as well, um, that uh, determine the effect of the stretch on the muscle spindles. Golgi tendon organs signal the force generated by the muscle contraction or by a passive stretch of the tendon. So, um, so if we're trying to get some position sense, is the arm up or down, how much stretch is there on that tendon, our Golgi tendon organs are going to give us that information. So the joint receptors respond to mechanical deformation of joint capsules and ligaments. So um, after a total knee replacement, we don't have um, the same uh, soft tissue, you know, they, we have titanium as um, part of our bone ends, but we still have our original joint capsule. The joint capsule is preserved during the surgery. So that's why people after joint replacements can still balance because they're still getting information from their Golgi tendon organs and their muscle spindles and their joint receptors. So um, in the book in table 6.1, there is... Um, the function of different diameter axons. Um, it's a nice little um, synopsis of that. Um, I like that table because it shows you the, um, the Roman numeral classification of the axon, whether it's large myelinated, medium myelinated, small myelinated, or small unmyelinated. And again, you can think of that, those C fibers as small, less myelinated. Um, so the muscle spindles are the 1As and their stimulus is muscle stretch. The um, Golgi tendon organs and ligament receptors are the 1Bs and um, the, they uh, are stimulated by ligament tension or um, tendon tension. Um, the 2s are the muscle spindles which are stimulated by muscle stretch. And then um, we'll look at some of the different sensory receptors but the um, Pacini corpuscles and um, Ruffini endings um, they um, detect joint movement by stretch of the joint capsules. Um, the A betas are um, Meisner's corpuscles, which are the stimulus is touch and vibration, and Pacinian corpuscles and Ruffini's Merkel's disc and hair follicles, um, which al also sense touch, vibration, skin stretch, and pressure. So we'll look at little um, depictions of these um, individual. Um, receptors as well. So the A delta fibers, and remember those are our fast pain fibers, they're free nerve endings so they don't have a specialized receptor shape, they're just free nerve endings in the um, subcutaneous tissue and their stimulus is tissue damage, temperature, and coarse touch. The free nerve endings, and coarse touch includes, um, is you know, similar to um, fine touch but it's um, less localized. 
Um, the C fibers, which are the smallest, least myelinated fibers, they're also free nerve endings, and their stimulus is tissue damage, excessive temperature, itch, and tickle. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> so those run in those slow pain fibers, itch and tickle. So it's not uh, it's, uh, an unpleasant sensation. So um, pathways, the, the information from those afferent receptors has to go in pathways to the brain um, and only the neurons with the long axons that connect distal regions of the nervous system are counted as part of the pathway. Um, so there are, there are lots of other little neurons doing things, but when we start talking about pathways, we're only talking about those projection neurons. So um, as we talked about in one of the earlier um, lectures, a tract is a bundle of axons with the same origin and a common termination. Um, somatosensory pathways, fortunately for us, are often named by the origin and the termination of the tract that contains the second neuron in the series. So um, that's, that's really nice because um, we can tell where, from the name of it, where the pathway goes to and from. For example, the spinothalamic pathway, we know it goes from the spine to the thalamus, and it tells you the direction too, so we know it's an afferent neuron. So if something is, um, has spino first, we know it goes from the spine to the central nervous system, and we know it's an afferent pathway. If it has spine last, um, it goes from the central nervous system to the spine, and we know it's an efferent pathway. So the names tell us a lot, which is super nice. Um, we, will talk, we will talk in the next section, we'll start talking about the three types of pathways that bring sensory information to the brain, but I'm going to talk a little bit right now about um, the different receptors and their specifics. So um, I, I just talked about these, the um, fine touch receptors or the A-betas, superficial fine touch, they have a small re receptive field and they're highly discriminatory, meaning they can sense um, small differences in, in location and information. So those are the Meissner's corpuscles and the Merkel's disc. So Meissner's corpuscles do light touch and vibration and Merkel's disc do pressure. Um, subcutaneous fine touch has a large receptive field and is less discriminatory. Um, so the superficial fine touch, you can, the Meissner's corpuscles and the Merkel's disc are very close to the surface of the skin. The Piscinian corpuscles and Ruffini's are um, that do touch and vibration and um, stretch are located deeper in the subcutaneous tissue. And we'll look at a picture of that too from the book. Um, the A deltas and the Cs, they're crudely localized touch for the A deltas and tickle and itch for the Cs, and those are free nerve endings. Um, the nociceptors are also the A deltas and the Cs, and they um, uh, carry pain and tissue damage information and their free nerve endings. So um, temperature can be A deltas and seeds, so um, warmth or cold not causing tissue damage. And then we have the nociceptors are the ones that cause tissue damage. So here's our depiction from the book of the different um, cutaneous and subcutaneous receptors. So there's a little free nerve ending that's probably an A delta or a C. Um, that's going to do the coarse touch and the tickle and itch. The Meissner's corpuscles, they do fine touch, um, a little bit of pressure and vibration. Um, the hair follicles have a nerve associated with it, and they also do fine touch. And the Merkel's disc, these ones right on the surface, those are, those are some um, very superficial, um, highly discriminatory um, sensations. The Piscinian corpuscles, the big uh, round one at the bottom, that's detecting pressure. It's deeper, so we know it's a deeper sensation. The Ruffini endings, they detect stretch. So when you stretch or deform the tissue in some way, that's where it's detected um, in that deeper subcutaneous tissue. So um, the dermatome, as I said earlier, is an area of skin innervated by axons from cell bodies in a single dorsal root. Um, the muscle spindle responds to stretch and the rate of length of change. So you're going to get a, a, a stronger response with a fast stretch than you do with a slow stretch. And, and we will use that um, for some of our therapeutic techniques. Um, a fast stretch can help activate the muscle spindle. 
Um, the muscle changes length and the spindle sends messages to the spinal cord about the length and the rate of change. Um, efferent messages are sent back to the muscle to control the length of change by contracting the end of interfusal fibers. Um, so the, um, the center of the interfusal fibers, which is inside the, the muscle belly, is um, non-contractile, but the ends contract and that affects muscle length. Um, Golgi tendon organs respond to very slight changes in the tension of a tendon. Um, it responds to tension from active muscle contraction and passive stretch. So the muscle spindles respond just to stretch, but Golgi tendon organs respond both to stretch and muscle contraction. Joint receptors respond to mechanical deformation of the joint capsule and ligaments. Um, the Ruffini endings um, are activated at the extremes of joint range because we're getting stretch. Um, the Pacinian corpuscles respond to movement. The ligament receptors like Golgi tendon organs respond to um, tendon tension and free nerve endings are often stimulated by inflammation. So if you have um, free nerve endings it, that are joint receptors in the joint capsule and you have an inflammatory process like arthritis going on, you might have pain associated with that because those free nerve endings are being stimulated by that inflammatory process. So um, proprioception is a combination of information from cutaneous receptors, Golgi tendon organs, spindles, and joint receptors. So as I said earlier, people with total joint replacements can retain good joint proprioception in the mid-range, indicating that joint receptors are not critical for proprioception. So the individual um, cutaneous receptors and um, the other things that aren't affected, the Ruffini endings and the Pacinian corpuscles that aren't affected in the surgery um, are the, the most critical for proprioception. So this is... Um, also in the book, it shows the difference between the peripheral nerve distributions and the dermatomal distribution. So that's one way to tell if um, something is a peripheral nerve injury or a more central injury, dermatomal versus peripheral nerve distribution of symptoms. So um, there's a five minute video on dermatomes and the dermatome dance, which was um, recorded by some physical therapy students, it's kind of a fun way to remember it. It's silly, but it's less than a minute of silly. So if you're in the mood for silly, watch that. And if you're not, don't do it. <laughs> so this is just the depiction from the book of the um, Golgi tendon organs and the uh, joint receptors. And there's a little five minute video on muscle spindles and Golgi tendon organs. So the second, the, so the first step in the sensation experience that we talked about is the, the um, peripheral receptors. So the peripheral receptors gather that information, they're stimulated by their individual stimuli, and they send that information up to the dorsal root ganglion, which is where the soma of those peripheral nerves lives. So the second step in the sensation experience is um, the action potential in the peripheral axon being conducted to the soma in the do dorsal root ganglion and into the spinal cord. So um, there's a um, picture in the book. It's a reflex arc. Um, so you have your receptors. They're sending their information up to the cell body in the dorsal root ganglion. That information is going um, out through the other axon to synapse with an interneuron in the spinal cord. Um, that um, then synapses with a motor neuron coming out of the ventral root of the spinal cord and goes out to the effector muscle. So um, you see all the processing with that is done in the spinal cord. It doesn't go to the brain at all. So um, the afferent sensory neuron synapses with um, an efferent motor neuron through that intermediary interneuron. The withdrawal reflex doesn't require a second order neuron to go to the cerebral cortex for the action to be initiated. Helps you get your hand on the fire faster. So um, you, you step on attack, your foot withdraws really fast. It's processed in the spinal cord. Nothing has to go to the brain to make the decision to do that. Pretty handy, I gotta tell you. So um, this 
video is posted in the module, I really recommend, a lot of the videos I say, you know, watch them if you want to, if you have time. But this one's only four minutes long. It's on spinal cord anatomy and organization. And I feel like it's really helpful for understanding how these um, processes work and sort of the layout of things. So I really highly recommend spending your four minutes on this video. Um, and it will help you understand some um, later things in the process.